I'd like to see some really good work done on connected assistive devices. So um, if you think, for example, about what's the change that we're seeing in the prosthetics market as a result of the last you know, umpteen wars we've been in the Middle East, right? We're seeing more kids come back without limbs. So as a result, we're seeing some real advances in prosthetics. It's not a great way to get it, but we're getting it. Um, we're also seeing a lot of DIY prosthetics. Um, I think we're going to see more and more instances of prosthetics that have, say, a tablet interface or a phone interface. So you can, you can get a sense of whether they're ill-fitting. You can do minor adjustments, that kind of thing. And you can even uh, customize them a little bit. Uh, I think we'll see the same thing with other assistive devices, everything from hearing aids to uh, glasses to you, know, you name it there. Um, I don't mean Google glasses, I mean regular glasses. Um, and I, I hope we'll start to see some of that in the medical space in general, because if you think about it, the largest generation we've got right now and most prosperous are the baby boomers. And they're getting old. And they got money to burn. So if I were a 20-something right now trying to figure out how to make a million dollars, I would be looking at geriatrics. Um, and I'd be looking at connected geriatrics because having the ability to... Um, to monitor, to customize, and to make comfortable is going to be huge in that space. I'm really interested right now in like citizen sensing of cities. Um, and there have been a number of projects around the world that have basically tried to build kind of Arduino uh, connected devices to measure uh, you know, air quality and noise and things like that. And I think. Those kinds of, of data are going to allow people to mobilize all kinds of campaigns, you know, against polluters, uh, against you know noise, crime, tainted food, whatever, whatever it is. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the um, kind of pedestrian and, and biking activist community in New York about how we can start measuring and tracking speeders as part of the Vision Zero campaign. And just some really interesting ideas about, yeah, we'll put, you know, iPhone cameras in, in windows and do machine vision and, and, you know, identify the speeders. Maybe go one step further and read the license plate. Um, maybe lay something down, uh, you know, on the, on the street to, to measure the speed. Um, and, like, it's, that's where I think things start to get really interesting is we've got all the technical capabilities out there now. Like, a lot of the gaps that used to exist are getting closed. You know, like the kind of connective tissue that, that Tembo's building, like that's in place now. Um, one of the other things that the, the city, New York City's Economic Development Corporation is doing is uh, I think the next round of their big apps contest, which they do every year. It's like uh, kind of, you know, we'll, we'll throw out a bunch of data and go build some interesting things and help people live better. Um, there's talk that the next version of that is going to be an IoT design contest. So we'll get to see some very specific problems that people are then asked to build solutions for. Um, and like that's, that's when you start to see all the pieces come together. I like to say that like smart cities are a crucible for the Internet of Things because it's, it's sort of like, like a neutron star where um, you've got the, the problem havers, the cities, the businesses, the citizens. You've got the problem solvers, right? So like all the people that are working in web shops or app shops now or graduate students who want to go out and build real stuff. You've got the, the legacy infrastructure that supports a lot of this stuff. So, you know, um, in Chicago, they're putting uh, air quality sensors on all, on all the light poles in the loop, right? That light pole was a really important piece of legacy infrastructure. Um, and then you've got the new infrastructure, which is all the digital networks, the 4Gs, the Wi-Fi hotspots and stuff. So cities is where all that's coming together and people are using it to, to build new stuff. It's, it's not, I mean, it's not happening in Mountain View. It's not happening in Cupertino. It's happening in San Francisco, New York City, and London. Um, and it's for that reason, I think, because you just got this real rich, like, substrate on which to build um, connected ecosystems that, like, are really valuable to people.